Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari has conferred the Public Service Awards of Excellence on the Chairman of the Federal Inland and Revenue Service, Mr. Mohamed Nami, as well as 43 others, including former President Mr. Goodluck Jonathan, President of the Senate, Mr. Ahmed Lawan, amongst other awardees. Mr. Nami was given the Maiden Nadran Excellence Award in Public Service for recognition uh, of for recognition of his efforts at shoring up revenue for the country by introducing unprecedented institutional modernization and technological reforms that has sent the FRS transform, seen the FRS transform into the nation's foremost cash cow. Within three years in office, Mr. Mohamed Nami is uh, a renowned uh, to have transformed and repositioned the apex revenue body to ensure efficiency in revenue collection, leading to the collection of an unprecedented sum of 6.4 trillion naira by the FRS in 2021 the highest ever collected by the service. In an appreciation message, Mr. Nami thanks President Buhari for the opportunity to serve while dedicating the award to the board, management and staff of the FRS taxpayers, among others. Afri Invest West Africa PLC is targeting local and foreign investors in its new growth plan, driven by the inauguration of Optimus by Afri Invest into the market. While well, speaking ahead of the event, Group Managing Director Afri Invest West Africa, uh, Mr. Ike Chioke, described it as a financial technology solution that helps customers do the most by harmonizing banking, wealth management, and brokerage needs uh, in one platform. He added that uh, Optimus was changing the way people interact with money to achieve financial freedom, adding that the rebranding of its operations is to align with global appeal and determination to serve wider markets and in its new phase of operations. In our marketplace, there are a lot of fintech companies that are out there mobilizing deposits. But what those fintech companies do that when they get the deposits, they turn around to companies like Afri Invest and place the money with us. You know, because they don't often have the regulatory license as a portfolio manager, as a, as a stockbroker. But we have those licenses and we are saying, why are we leaving our business to tech companies to come and take over the finance space when we have the finance experience and we have the risk management, we have the compliance systems. So we should be able to build the same platform and, and do it even much more efficiently because we have 27 years of experience. We've seen the markets go up and down. We've seen economic cycles come, up, come and go. We've seen political cycles. And all of these things have implications in how you manage investors' money. So Optimus now becomes a new front end for Afri Invest going forward. Within that app alone, on it, every, there will be one or two touch points for everyone within Nigeria and abroad because uh, Beyond that, remittances is also an area we're also looking at, which for us, because we are regulated, whatever we're also going to do will fall within the ambit of regulations and will be standardized. And, and I believe that it's, some, uh, it's something that will provide a lot of confidence because we know for some of the fintechs that are also around, a lot of Nigerians are still skeptical in terms of who are those behind it. And we believe we have that credibility. Moving on, the stock market maintains recovery trend as share prices moved up. Let's join F. Young Ekop for detailed reports on markets. For straight four days, the stock market has sustained gains on securities prices. Apart from kicking the index upward by more than half of a percentage point, the volume of deals increased by average measure of 158 million units of shares, while trade value hit 2.72 billion naira. Boa Cement was able to influence stretch positively by 10% gain as investors ran after its shares in their attempt to create wealth. Sunu Assurance, Jaya's Bank, Union Bank and RT Brisco also closed threats with gains. Royal Exchange ended business on the downside following a loss of more than 9%. Multiverse, May and Becker, Cornerstone Insurance and NGX Group all left the market with baskets of losses. If you want to up TVC News, Lagos. 
Asian equities fell into two and a half year low today as early gains inspired by a rally on Wall Street and hopes the Federal Reserves could be nearing the end of aggressive rates increases. We're offset by weakness in uh, Chinese shares and the yuan. Now equities were mixed in Asia with Japan's advancing 0.7%, South Korea rising 0.3%, Taiwan was down 0.7%, Hong Kong shed 0.6%, MSCI's broadest index of Asian Pacific shares lost 0.4%. Uh, after drop dipping to 427.4, the lowest since April 2020. The mainland Chinese shares uh, was our uh, benchmark index was also uh, shut down about 0.6%, and the offshore yuan tumbled to yet another record low against the dollar, weakened to as much as 7.36 per, per dollar. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose 1.34%, S&P 500 gained 1.19%, Nasdaq Composite added 0.86%. Now, oil prices and international market fell by more than one dollar uh, today as bearish economic data from key global economies heightened fears for demand. A U.S. West Texas intermediate crude is selling for $83.43 per barrel with a price decline of 1.36%. Brent crude features sells for $91.96 per barrel, experiencing a downward price margin of 1.39%. Bonnie Light experiences an uptick of 0.36% to sell at $92.73 per barrel. And for the OPEC basket, crude oil dealers offer $92.09 per barrel with a decline of 0.42%. It's launched a $538 million special agro-industry processing zones initiative. The move is a collaboration effort between the federal government, International Fund for Agricultural Development, the African Development Bank, as well as the Islamic Development Bank, Lara for Lion reports. This marks the launching of Nigeria's Special Agro-Industrial Processing Zones Initiative. The $538 million project is the joint effort of the federal government, the International Fund for Agricultural Development, the African Development Bank, as well as the Islamic Development Bank. The launching marks the start of the Agro-Industrial Processing Zones first phase, which will be implemented in selected states across the country. The authorities describe the initiative as an attestation to the country's commitment to agricultural transformation. It is now a critical component of our agricultural strategy, which is to accelerate the industrialization of our agricultural sector, with the objective of being ahead of our constraints in providing food, nutrition and wealth for the largest population on the continent. The first phase of the SAPZ program is to kickstart with a credit facility of 410.49 million US dollars already secured from our co-financing development partners, namely the African Development Bank with 210 million US dollars, the Islamic Development Bank 150.2 million US dollars and the International Fund for Agricultural Development, IFAD, with 49.97 million US dollars. The zones are expected to drive value addition for agricultural commodities, enhance food security, and boost non-oil income generation. With the SAPZ project, we will have reached 700 million US dollars of direct investment with Nigeria, and with co-financing 1.2 billion dollars with our partners in Nigeria. The SAPZ is the flagship for Nigeria's agriculture, which entails the development and operation of agro-industrial processing clusters in areas of high food production across the country to engender the competitiveness in agro-industrial production and processing. The special agro-industrial processing zones are get towards driving agro-processing activities in areas of great agricultural advantage. They are designed to bring together agricultural producers, processors, aggregators and distributors to operate in areas of comparative advantage that will help cut down on transaction costs while driving productivity. Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja.